When you install a custom car audio system, you're of course going to need to run a new power wire from the battery to the amplifier or to other system components. Everyone knows that, but the wire that you pick and how you wire this system is so, so important for getting great performance. If you make the wrong choices, you can literally lose hundreds of watts of output. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. When I first got into car audio, I made a bunch of mistakes that definitely led to poor performing systems because I didn't know the do's and don'ts of car audio power wire. We're going to kick things off with the basics and then we'll progressively get more advanced. But first things first, don't get confused by wire gauge sizes. I've got this little chart here from New Concepts that I'll put on screen. And what I mean on this first don't is don't get confused by the fact that as the gauge size number gets larger, that actually means a smaller wire. So in this case, eight gauge is the smallest wire and then four gauge is larger, zero gauge also called one aught, that is even larger, and four aught or quadruple zero gauge is the largest. This is definitely helpful to know when it comes to picking out your power wire size because you gotta know that eight gauge can handle the least amount of current because it's smaller, four gauge is bigger, and zero gauge is even bigger yet. Next up, do be aware that not all wire is equal, even if it's the same size. The first comparison to make is CCA wire, which stands for copper clad aluminum, versus OFC wire, which stands for oxygen free copper. The OFC wire is a much better conductor than the CCA wire. So what this means is if we have equal lengths of wire, we're going to have less of a voltage drop across the OFC wire, which means more voltage making it to our amplifier, which means more watts out of our amplifier. Another factor that comes into play when picking OFC wire or CCA wire is how much current draw you're actually going to need to go through that wire in order to create the certain power for the size of amplifiers that you have. We're going to talk more about this in a second, but just as an example, I want to refer to our graph. Let's say we did our calculations and we know that we're going to need 125 amps of current. We can see on our chart here that if we're trying to use the KCA line that the four gauge wire isn't going to be large enough we would need to step up to the one aught or zero gauge wire but if we were to upgrade and do the OFC Colossus wire we could use the four gauge wire as that gives us 150 amps at 20 feet. Generally speaking I recommend upgrading to OFC wire if you are able to but if you do oversize you can have CCA wire still work for the applicable current draw of of your system. Understanding how voltage drop works is really important and I'll just give you a brief overview. So obviously when we're running from our battery back to our amplifier, that's a pretty long run of wire. And if we use something like an OFC wire and we only lose, I don't know, like a tenth or two tenths of a volt, it's not going to be a big deal. But with CCA, we could easily lose a full volt. So now rather than running your amplifier on a full 14.4 volts, you might only be running it on 13.4, which if you see this equation on screen, you can see that that actually leads to a loss in the power that we are able to create. Next up, a do. Do make sure that you pick the right wire size. In order to pick the right wire size, we need to know how many watts of power our amplifier can create, and we also need to know an approximate distance that that wire is going to need to run. By knowing those two values, we can use a formula that allows us to determine the exact wire size that we need. I actually went full in detail on this because it is a little bit longer of a process. You can check out the link here in the corner of the screen. As a quick side note, throughout this video, there's going to be five other videos that I'm going to reference to you guys that really go into detail on designing the electrical system for your car audio upgrades. I definitely recommend watching all five of these videos as you'll really gain an understanding of these advanced lessons. So throughout this video at the top of the screen here, that little eye icon, you're gonna see those annotations. The next do for power wire, do understand how to properly fuse. A lot of people think that the reason that you add a fuse on the power wire is to protect the equipment, and that's actually not the case. The point of adding a fuse on the wire is so that if that fuse does short circuit onto the body of the vehicle, that fuse is going to blow rather than having a short circuit going through that wire, lighting the wire on fire. Fusing is very important in car audio and for your power wire. Again, a 
related video in the playlist. Next up, a don't. Don't use home electrical wire in a car audio install. Car audio power wire has thousands and thousands of strands, which makes it very flexible and easy to use throughout an install. The other important thing here is car audio wire has insulation on the wire that is designed for a car environment. Typically, it's more resistant to high temperatures and cold temperatures, and it's better built for that fluctuation. Stick to using car audio wire. Next up, a do. Do consider getting an amplifier wiring kit. When you're installing an amplifier, there's all these different wires you need. You need the power, the ground, you're going to need RCA signal wires, speaker wires, all these different wires and different connections. And you may think that you need to buy everything individually, but you should definitely take advantage of the savings that can be had by buying an amp kit. This is the perfect time to take a quick second and thank our monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. I wanna show you guys one of their amp kits. So this here is the Colossus 4 gauge amplifier kit. If we open it up here, we can see that this kit has both our power and ground. It also has a remote turn on lead. It has our speaker wires, which by the way, those are oxygen free copper. They've got a shielded RCA signal cable in here along with some wire loom to protect the power wire in the engine compartment. Also a fuse holder and a fuse. We talked about this earlier. You gotta have that. That, and a bunch of other various connections. New Concepts has a wide variety of different amplifier kits based on your application. I've been using them for years, long before they were ever a sponsor of the channel. You guys know that I love recommending only the companies that I really, really believe in. So if you wanna learn more, check out the link down in the video description. Next up, we have a don't, don't make common power wire installation mistakes. The most common mistake I see is taking this wire and running it through the side of the hood and then through the door jam. That's just gonna lead to all sorts of issues. I have some tips and other recommendations for you on installation of power wire in the related video playlist. Next up, we have a do, do your darn research. What I mean by this is again, not all wire is created equal. And even if it looks like a zero gauge wire on the outside, it might not actually be a zero gauge wire on the inside. Unfortunately, there's some companies out there that like to do a little bit of the marketing hype and add a ton of insulation around the actual core of the wire in order to make that wire have the appearance of looking much larger. So a good way to make a comparison here is to look for manufacturers that advertise their core OD or the core outer diameter, so the actual diameter of that wire inside. Another good way to do your research is to just look at the reviews online. Companies that do adhere to the correct guidelines for the size of wire will usually have good reviews and people are pretty good at calling out those companies that have that excess insulation. Next up, a don't. Don't judge wire purely based on the appearance. As we were discussing earlier in the video, this is copper clad aluminum. It has a copper color because it's literally copper clad around aluminum wire. But where I've seen people get confused is they know that they want oxygen free copper. They want that OFC wire. So it must always be copper colored, right? No, that is not the case. This is in fact OFC wire, but you can see that it's silver in color. And the reason for that is because this is tinned OFC. The difference between normal OFC, which would be copper in color in this, which is tinned OFC, is because this has this tinned metal on the outside of the copper strands, it gives it a corrosion resistance. Just in case you didn't know this, the Statue of Liberty is made out of copper. So it was actually copper colored back in the day, and now now it's green because it's oxidized. The same thing can happen over time with wire and that's why it's beneficial to spend a little bit more money for a premium wire that is a tinned OFC. This makes it better for a marine application where it might be more exposed to water and the elements. And in my opinion, it makes it a better choice for just general car audio use as obviously cars can also be exposed to moisture. Now we have another do. Do make a system layout prior to installation. Drawing out all the wiring for an advanced install and doing all the calculations on one piece of paper is always a good idea to make sure that you have everything that you're going to need for the planning purposes, but also to make sure that everything is sized correctly. I have a full video about doing this for a pretty advanced car audio system with three amplifiers and a DSP. Again, you can check out that video in the related video playlist. So now we know the do's and don'ts of car audio power wire. Check out those other videos that I've made in the past. And if you're new here, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Don't forget to check out show sponsor New Concepts at the link down in the video description. And a special thanks to Mike, Ron, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. And thank you for watching.